Right, hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video and today we're going to have a look at um, the board that was sent in this week and it's quite an interesting one well, I say it's quite an interesting one hopefully it's going to be quite an interesting one um, so just let me get it out of the box here it's this one it's nothing like being prepared is there so basically it's this one yes this one here so this one has been sent in for a hdmi port replacement uh we have actually had worse than this but this this is one of those problems where it's just a bit of a pain in the bum because if we actually look here there's been some damage uh, occurred on this board and I will show you why that is. So essentially what happens is, is that when you replace the HDMI port, of course, we use hot air to actually remove the port from the board. If you've been watching what we do. And the reason why we use the hot air is because it actually loosens the leaded solder uh, and warms the actual area of the board up. Um, around the port and basically you know allows us to lift that port out very easily without actually causing any further damage and if you do it right and with a bit of practice well, of course what you will find is that the port and will more or less drop out of its own accord leaving no traces of anything in the board and meaning that the solder pads and everything are just nicely yeah they're covered in old solder but we clean them off and they're all nicely intact and everything else this particular board uh, has had a rather interesting method of trying to remove the port and it looks like somebody's just cut it off with a pair of side cutters so it looks like somebody's basically got a set of these things uh, and essentially just snipped the legs of the board and then got a maybe like a craft knife or a sharp knife of some description literally run down the back of the pins and they've cut those off uh, and those are still actually left on the board but what they have done is is whilst they've been doing that of course uh, the force of actually going across the pin uh, with the blade like that has actually ripped one of these and they're lucky they've only done the one but they have ripped a, a pad um, out of the board there so that's pin two pin two of course goes to this little diode here on the left hand side there as you're looking at it so we will be running a link wire there and I actually want to show you how we do that because uh, we've had uh, somebody ask me on a couple of occasions now uh, just how, uh, what methods I use to run my link wires. And although we've only got the one to run on this board, um, it's obviously a good opportunity to show you how I do that. So that's what we're going to do. But first of all, we've got to clean this up. Now, <laughs> if the port was in and the port was sat there all nice and shiny just waiting to be lifted out this would be a lot easier because of course we just use our normal extraction method get a bit of hot air on it uh, and just pull the port and its entirety off the board and we basically all we have to do then is clear these holes of excess solder in this case that's that's not happened in, in what's happened here is as i say somebody's cut them off so we have the remnants of the old ground pins still in the holes which is going to be a real pain in the ass to get out and of course then of course we have to remove the traces of the legs which are still in the board here uh, we have to tin all these pads back up with some nice solder and then of course we have to repair this uh, this second pin here that's, that's damaged or pin 18 really as it's technically known but uh, okay so no time like the present I don't suppose so we better get cracking so first of all i'm going to zoom you back out so you can actually see what we're doing and i'm going to get a bit of light on this desk for you i'm going to turn this over and you'll be pleased to know of course if you've been watching the last video that we have our sound recording setup repaired hallelujah um, so we actually have some decent audio again for a change well hopefully we do anyway so I'm just going to zoom you in there. Hopefully you can see that and hopefully the autofocus is going to play nicely. Hopefully. So without further ado, we're going to turn on the hot air station. We're going to flux our board up 
So, as before, despite the fact there isn't much in the way of solder on this board, we are going to add a little bit of flux there. Probably actually got a bit much there, to be fair. But it all cleans up afterwards. Okay, so that's that. And now... Going to get our air station, and we're also going to add a bit of fume extraction here. So, my apologies if this gets a bit noisy. Hopefully, it's not as bad as it used to be. Now, to get these other bits and pieces out. So, what I think we're going to do is we're going to attack this in the same method we would to actually clear the holes. And I'm going to try and push these pins out if I can. So, I need my tweezer blades. Oh, do you know, I keep meaning to tidy this room of mine up, and in true tradition, I actually sat next door to where I am, so. Fume extraction. Oh, hopefully this doesn't get too noisy for you. Okay. So, so far, I don't think I've actually done much work with the, uh, the fume extraction and the air gun. whilst using this headset um, so I'm not entirely sure how how it sounds or or anything as yet so it's going to be interesting to see how the next couple of videos pan out so I can see there that what solder is in those holes is now starting to go a little bit shiny So hopefully that means that I can start to push the remnants of of these pins back through the board. Okay, so that's got rid of them for now. So we're just going to try and clear the holes of solder as we normally would. So that's using the, the uh, really fine 0.8 mil braid. with the air wand. Now we're going to add a bit more flux there. And I can see there that the remnants of one of those legs is now on my work mat which is good. So we'll try again with the other side. And the other side's now come out as well. Well, that was a total pain in the ass, but um, we've cleared those holes now. Uh, I presume it actually looks as though somebody's Try to remove uh, the old port with lead free solder. So, the lead free solder that's in there to begin with is hard enough to get rid of without sort of adding more, <laughs> more to it. But anyway, those holes are clear now, so we're just going to do a little bit of a, a little bit of cleaning up with a bit of IPA here. It's always easier to get the board clean while it's slightly warm. Then it is to wait till it's all cooled off and then go in because it tends to set quite hard if you do that. So anyway, so that that's now gotten rid, hopefully, of the biggest part of the old gunk. So let's get rid of that for now. And let's have a look top side. So we've still got our crappy old pads and things like that there so that's going to be the next job to get rid of so in order to do that we are going to get a drop of flux again here and we're going to stick it on the top and we're going to pop it over the pins and then we're going to get our soldering iron 
And we're going to get our fume extraction back because, of course, we don't want to be breathing this stuff in. It's not nice. And we're just going to push. We're going to heat with the end of the of the iron, and we're just going to push. And you'll see there now that on the end of the iron, we've got all those old HDMI feet that were there before. And this should get us a decent look as to what sort of condition now these pins are in. So hopefully they're not going to be too bad. Um, I'm just going to get a bit more of my PA in my syringe here. I could do with a bigger syringe, to be fair. Because we go through some of this stuff, so... I'm just going to clean that portion of the board up now and we'll be able to see... Hopefully what lies in wait for us, and hopefully what lies in wait for us is going to be fairly straightforward, so. Okay, so, let's have a look at what we've got. So hopefully you can see this, and there we go. So I just had the brightness turned down on my on my phone camera here because the battery's not flat, but it's not great. Um, so I can actually see a lot better what you're seeing, and you can see there now quite nicely that missing pin there, pin 18, second pin in from the right. Uh, that goes to a little via just there, uh, and then that hops onto the back side of this. So, in fact, what we might be able to do here we might, and I'm just trying to think of the best way of doing this whether to run a link wire. Or what it actually does is, you'll notice that it comes off the back uh, of this pin to this little via here, and then it goes through the board, and then up this side. So, I'm just thinking whether it might be worth... We'll see how much room we've got to play with when we get a port in there, just to see if it's worth maybe just trying to create a new pad out of the back side of that HDMI, uh, out of that pin 18, sorry, so... If we can create a new pad out of that via, then obviously that's going to work a little bit nicer for us. But if not, then... Okay, so the port fits nicely. So we're just going to check the pin alignment. And... Pin alignment there is... It's nearly there, it's close, but it's not quite. So we're just gonna nudge this over slightly. So I need my my grips wherever they've gone. They've gone over the back of the desk. I am hoping actually within the next few months to actually have a bit of a, a nicer space to to work in. So I don't actually end up losing half my stuff, because at the minute I seem to spend half my time filming these videos, looking for bits and pieces that I need to actually do the bloody job. So, let's just check that pin alignment again there. Again, it's close, but we just need to knock it over slightly again. Okay, that's looking pretty straight now, actually. That's looking quite nice. So you can see the, the pins are lining up 
with the pads. So let's just see how much room we've got now on the back of that pin 18, just to see if we've actually got enough room to create a new pad. And it's not... It's not brilliant, it's probably actually it's just ripped out the back just a little bit too much. So we are going to have to run a lot of wire to do this properly, really. Um, which is a bit of a shame, but, you know, what can you do? So, I do actually have my new microphone, microphone, my new um, microscope. But unfortunately, it isn't set up yet. And uh, <laughs> it's on my list of things. My list of things that grows ever longer. But we are going to get it up and running. Okay, so I'm just going to try and lock you off there so you can see what I'm sort of seeing, hopefully. Try and get the autofocus to play. Without looking too nasty. Okay, so we're going to get a few extraction back. So we've got the port. And the port is now lined up okay. So we're going to apply some flux to these pads. They've already got solder on them. Which should be sufficient. For what we're going to want here. So we're just going to apply a little bit of flux. And we're going to install this port as we normally would. So we're going to ignore the fact that, that second pin in there from the left hand side is missing for the moment. We're going to align our port there on the pads and then we're just going to get our soldering iron here and we're going to tack a couple of these pins down one side so my apologies if i just block you for a second there Basically what we're doing here is we're just tacking down the pins and just getting them their initial contact. On the pads. And then once we're sure we've actually got them, what we'll do is we'll tin the end of the iron and we'll put some more flux down. And then we'll run across the surface of these pins to make sure they're all tacked nicely into place. So we've actually got the pins tacked down to the board now. So we're going to go in there with some more flux at the back of the port. Pardon me. And then we get a little bit of solder on the end of the iron, not a lot. You really don't need a lot. Okay. And then we're just going to go across the back. And what you're looking for is the flux to sort of bubble away. And then the pin will actually go shiny. Now once you start to see the pin go shiny, you know that the, the solder is actually flowing through the pad and up and onto the leg. Once you see that, you're, you're good to go once you see that. So I just stroke back and forth along here a couple of times. And that just makes sure that each pin...
is properly soldered and then I go down along the length of each pin there just to make sure there's no bridges and what that does as well it just helps eat the, uh, the entire length of the pin and it just helps the solder stick nice and uniformly along its length so it gives us a nice clean strong really rather good looking joint at the end of the process and that ladies and gentlemen is that now this soldering iron tip here is my new one because my old one blew up a couple of weeks ago it's now a it's a although I'm still using the i solder 40 the Hakko T12 series the tips are completely compatible they're the same um, connection fitting in the end so you're actually free to use those um, and this soldering iron tip I've got here is actually a really fine one it's a it's a Hakko T12i uh, iron tip and it is basically as needle nose as you are going to get um, which is really really great for doing things like link wires on the back of these HDMI ports as you can see it's also very suitable for soldering in the rear pins of these HDMI ports and you have a lot of control over the iron. The only drawback to it is because it is so fine what you may find is is that it can be quite difficult to actually build heat up into the board or the connection so it's only really suitable for for small scale things you know you wouldn't want to be trying to solder in a big surface mount you know like a, a power cap or something like that with it really um, you know but for doing HDMI port pins it's absolutely perfect so those pins there now are looking really rather nice and the port is looking really cool so I don't think you can see that like I say when I actually get my arse around to uh, putting my microscope together um, hopefully you guys will be able to see a little bit more of, of what I do um, with regards to the actual pins themselves and the soldering but they're actually looking really rather nice so the job now is to actually run that link wire and you've got a couple of choices for link wires uh, you can actually use a series of, of objects you can either use kinar wrapping wire which is okay but with the sheathing and things on there it can be quite thick um, and it can take up a lot of room behind the back of the port or you can use what I have started using for doing things like this and it's absolutely perfect and that is enameled wire or some people might know it as transformer wire or bell wire well not bell wire actually um, enameled wire yep I forgot the actual name for it now <laughs> it's basically it's just the um, it's just copper it's a really really thin copper this is I think it's 34 gauge I think you can get thinner than this but this is perfect for doing HDMI ports and although it just looks like bare copper it's actually not it's enameled so because it's enameled uh, it is actually insulated just as you know your length of kind of wrapping wire would be for example um, but the benefit is because it doesn't have the bulky uh, sort of outer PVC sheathing on it it's a lot thinner and therefore a lot easier to get behind your ports and manipulate the only difference is is that in order to um, in order to actually get this stuff to strip uh, you have to apply heat to the end of it so what I do is and I'm just going to move the board out of the way is I get a drop of leaded solder on the end of my iron and let's try and do this in the view of the camera so I've got this a uh, way away from me at the moment so it's actually quite difficult uh, but essentially you see the length of solder there so I get a bit on the iron and just get the end of the wrapping wire and just run it there across the end of the iron and you'll see that we get say that little half a centimetre there now you can see has solder on it so what I then do is I get a little bit of flux just tap it on the end of the wire 
and then get the iron back and then just touch the iron to it and what you'll actually find is the solder then adheres quite nicely to the end of the wire and tins it up so that's probably a little bit long for going at the back of a HDMI port of course because the pins are only small but what you can do is just trim it down to a more suitable length like that so there's just a couple of mil there now and that's ready to go on the back of our port so we get our port back in situ and once again we're just going to add a drop of flux to the end of the wire I'm going to get the wire in the tweezers and then I'm going to offer the wire to the back of the port. Now it's a shame you can't see this. I'm going to actually try and move you to the other side if I can without causing too much havoc. So hopefully you can see a little bit more about what I'm actually doing here. Uh, where are you? I might still end up blocking your view actually. Like I say, this is why it'll be nice when I actually get the microphone camera, so the microscope camera up and running because you'll be able to see perfectly what's going on on the end of here without me blocking your view. So, I'm going to get a pair of tweezers. And uh, now I'm going to get the end of the soldering iron, and the soldering iron is clean. Of course, it has a tiny little bit of solder on there. And we're just going to bend this wire down towards the board. Off of it up against this pin. And you see how fine this tip is. This wire might just need a touch more solder on it. Just bear with me. It's just going to get a touch more solder on the end of the wire. And we'll stick a touch more flux on there as well. Ah. We had that there. The key is to make sure that the wire itself is actually straight down the length of the pin. You don't want it sort of half cocked over onto the other set of pins at all if you can if you can help it. So that is now connected 
to our HDMI port pin. So what we're going to do is we're just going to trim the end of that wire. There we go. So we're not pulling on it at all. And then we're going to bend this. I'm going to bend this wire now into position. So we're going to do that by, and this would be a lot easier if I had a Every time I see my mate, I keep meaning to nick my uh, pair of fine tweezers back off him, but uh, I always forget. So, anyway. Just going to get a hold of the end of the wire and just bend it around. My tweezer blade here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that the actual wire itself is flat to the board. And that it isn't sticking up anywhere. And as you can see that one now is. So I'm just going to push it down against the base of this diode of course. Which is where our link wire is going to run. And then we need a... I need my craft knife from somewhere, so I'm just going to go get that, boys and girls, because I can't see it on the desk. I think I've taken it downstairs. So I'll be back in a sec. Right, OK, we've got that back now. So, because this is really fine, sort of soft stuff, the knife itself will actually go through it really quite easily. So, because that's now pushed down against the board, uh, and bloody hell, I've lost my tweezers now. Ah, oh, do you know, this is impossible to work with. So, what we do is, we just go in with a knife, literally where we want to cut There we go, and we just push down and through Move the excess And that is it. So you can see there now that our wire is, to the, is trimmed to the perfect length, so we've now got to tin that. So this is where it gets tricky, because these wires are very, very small, they're very, very thin. And because they're very, very small and very, very thin, they actually conduct heat unbelievably well. So much so, of course, that what it can do is that the amount of heat that you get just trying to trim the end of the wire can be enough to actually lift the bloody thing from the uh, from the other end because it's only short so the <laughs> you can actually end up soldering both sides of the wire at the same time which is annoying so as before we're just going to get some solder on the end of our iron we're going to lift the end of this wire very gently of course because it's still attached to our port at the other end And we're just going to rub there, as you can see, the last couple of millimetres at the end of the wire. And that's now done. So, I'm just going to get a drop of flux again. I'm going to tin the... We're going to cover the end of the wire, which of course is now tinned. And we're going to drop some on the back edge of that diode. And then we're going to offer the wire again. Making sure it's straight. And flat. Okay, that's looking really nice now. And what you'll see when we go around the other side, when you're not trying to do this sort of with a viewfinder in the way and not trying to block the view of the camera, this is actually a lot easier <laughs> and a fair bit quicker to do. But uh, as I say, when the microscope camera gets, uh, when I actually get my backside in gear to do that, then 
you'll be able to see a lot nicer what I'm actually doing with these things. But you can see there now that our link wire is in place. It's nice and straight on the back of the pin there. It's nicely connected. It's solid there. It's not moving. It's nice and flat to the board. And it's soldered to the other end. And of course that's not moving either. So that link wire is in place. And it's looking really rather nice. The length is perfect. So we're just going to get down the back of the port with a bit more IPA and across the back of that diode of course where we've been with the flux and we just want to give it a really light rub you don't want to go too hard on it you don't want to do anything silly you don't want to go ripping the pad back out or Ripping the wire by breaking the pin in the HDMI port either for that matter, but Okay, so that's all looking really rather nice now That's all cleaned up and Just gonna give it a dab off there a bit of paper towel Oh, yeah, we demonstrate ESD safely in here <laughs> We said that these boards are the last there where is at the moment is ESD safety so We can see there now that our pins are really nice and they're soldered properly and they're all flat and uniform there they've all got a nice uniform coating of solder the link wire is in place and attached and it's nice and short it's perfect it's sat against the board nice and flat and it goes directly to the components that we need to repair that's really cool so what we're going to do now is i'm going to get rid of the fume extraction and before we go away and test this what we're going to do these were sent board only anyway so there's only so much testing we can actually do with it unfortunately but okay so we're going to test pin one to pin two to make sure there's no short uh, we don't hear any beep from the multimeter and it reads open line, so that's really cool. We're going to check the link wire. We're going to check the top of the port to the link wire there. We're going to check across the back side of the diode. We'll have to put it in diode mode for that. Most probably. We are getting a reading across the diode there from the top of that pin, so that's cool. So that means that we're actually reading as expected so our link wire is in place and working properly we're going to go pin 2 now to pin 3 to make sure we have no short between pin 2 pin 3 and we don't we're going to go pin 3 pin 4 pin 4 pin 5 pin 5 pin 6 pin 6 pin 7 pin 7 pin 8 pin 8 pin 9 pin 9 pin 10 pin 10 pin 11 pin 11 pin 12 Pin 12, pin 13, pin 13, 14, pin 14, 15, pin 15, 16, pin 16, 17, pin 17, 18, and pin 18, 19. And they're all reading no short, they're all showing open line. The couple of little bips, if you got them there, was me catching the multimeter probes together as I move them between the pins. So those are all looking really rather nice. We've got no shorts apparently. That's all looking really rather nice. Our link wire is reading across the diode perfectly um, and is in the right place of course and everything's soldered down perfectly. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go away now and we will put this in a test chassis. Once we've got it in the test chassis of course we can actually make sure that it fires up and that we get a display. And once we get the display And we can see that our HDMI port is actually working as expected. What we can do then is we can actually uh, so well not solder. We can actually glue the link wire down into place. Now, what I would recommend you do if you've got some is actually use some conformal coating pen. Um, now, I unfortunately haven't got any at the moment. Uh, I do have one on order for doing things like this. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't arrived yet. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use that good old favourite, the, the hot snot, 
the uh, shitty glue gun, unfortunately, for now, uh, till, <laughs> till that gets here. But essentially, what the conformal coating pen is, it's like um, it's green. It's a bit like this circuit. Um, solder mask sort of stuff if you like um, and basically what it does is it, it obviously acts as an insulator and just keeps everything out of the way of touching things that you don't want like link wires and things like that that you may run across your boards um, so that's that ladies and gentlemen so that port is now in the only thing we have to do is solder the four ground posts underneath our link wire is in of course so that is the next job and then we can call this done well as far as testing goes anyway so we have I'm trying to think where you're looking there oh no you're looking at the wrong part right? so let's just get you up there i do need to find somewhere good for this camera to go <laughs> you know what i mean i need to find you somewhere you can live i need to find you somewhere you can live where you can see exactly what i'm doing without me getting in the way of you or you getting in the way of me while I'm working, and if we can do that, ladies and gentlemen, then we will have a very, very happy working relationship together. If not, then well, I'm just gonna have to keep blocking bits of your view, unfortunately, till such time as we can find a, a way around it. So, what we're gonna do, of course, is we're gonna add some more fume extraction here. I always forget. And that is not a good thing, so. I'm being lazy here, and I should know better. I should know better than to be lazy, because these are big ground connections. These are big ground connections, and... That is a very, very small, fine solder cane tip. So, we have got our nice, big, fat, big Bertha tip here. I do actually have um, a new tip as well, which I'm quite interested to use next time I have a e-balling on. And it's a, it's a shovel tip. Basically, what it is, is it's just basically a massive... It looks like a big letter T, which should make cleaning the BGAs and the boards off. A breeze. Well, hopefully, anyway. So we're just working the solder down the holes into the board and the back of the HDMI port and that's all looking wow, really rather cool. I had to get some new solder the other day as well because I ran out. And the new stuff, bloody hell, the flux in it. <laughs> The flux in it vaporises and it absolutely stinks. The old stuff was quite cool. It had rosin core flux in it just the same, but it didn't smell. No, it did, but only when you got a real lungful of it, which was never really a good idea. But um, this stuff just stinks. Not at all very pleasant. I could do with some finer solder as well. This is one mil thick stuff. It's quite big. Perfect for doing your ground pins and things for HDMI ports, but not really ideal for fine scale work. But so we're just going to clean the area there around the board. I'm just going to get that lump of crusty old shite. I don't know if that was me or whether that was there for manufacturer, I'm not entirely sure. Because they do tend to have, strangely enough, every now and again you'll find a, a board that has come from manufacturing with a, a bit of flux over here, but... Ah, well, it all comes off. 
it all cleans up as they say so we have our port in there now our port is good we hope tests okay anyway there's no shorts between the pins the pins are all soldered we have our nice new link wire run our link wire is going to the correct place it's nice and flat to the board it's the perfect length connections are solid that ladies and gentlemen is how we do that so we're going to go away and test this now and we'll see if it works and if it does we can call that a successful repair and moving on to the next one